Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, I don't want you to say it. I want you to do it. Somebody put those hands together and give God the best praise that you can. That's an applause. I need some praises that came in the door ready to give them praise. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you sit next to the right one tonight. Because we're getting ready to get our praise on. Tell them why. Because Jesus died for you. Now, if I got some radical saints, do me a favor. Everybody clap your hands. Come on, come on. Put a smile on your face. Come on. You know why? Because the devil is a liar and a loser too. Come on, come on. What are we doing in the balcony? Come on. We all going to be the praise team. Y'all ready? I want to hear you. Come on. Say, I will call upon the Lord. For he is worthy to be praised. Come on, say it. I will call upon the Lord. For he is worthy to be praised. Everybody say, I will call upon the Lord. Y'all got the mood tonight. For he is worthy to be praised. Everybody say, I will call upon the Lord. For he So shall I be saved from my enemies. The Lord Come on, church. And bless him be the rock. And let the God of my salvation be exalted. Hey. The Lord bless him be. And bless him be the rock. And let the God of my salvation be exalted. Y'all got it now. Come on, sing. I will call upon the Lord. Worthy to be worthy. Everybody say, I will call upon the Lord. For oh, he is worthy to be worthy. One more time, say, I will call upon the Lord. For oh, he is worthy to be worthy. Can I get a witness? Say, I will call upon the Lord. For oh, he is worthy to be worthy. So shall I be saved. Come on, say the Lord. The Lord. Bless it be. Bless it be the rock. And let the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord reigns. The Lord. Bless it be. Bless it be the rock. And let the God of my salvation be exalted. Say the Lord. Let me get the house in order. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you think I waited outside all that time, if you think I fought so hard to get a parking spot just to stand here and watch people come in the sanctuary, tell them you got another thing coming. Tell them God's been too good to me tonight. I came to get my praise on. Let me see those hands up in the air. And everybody say, the Lord reigns. The Lord Blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord, the Lord, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock. 
beside you and say what's up what's up what's up tell them it's good to sit by you tell them let me tell you something about me look at him look at him and say let me tell you something about me i might get happy tonight i might cry tonight i might shout tonight don't look at me crazy i'm just a living testimony that jesus has been the rock of my salvation. Go ahead and take 10 seconds and bless him because he's God. Bless him because he's your keeper. Bless him because he's been good to you. Yes, he has.
Well, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Listen, spread some love around the sanctuary. You may not know them, but hug them or dap them or elbow them and let them know I'm glad you made it tonight. Tell them I'm glad you made it. Spread some love. Look at somebody you don't know. Tell them I'm glad you made it. Glad you made it. Glad you made it. Don't lose that seat now. You may not get it back. Stay close to your seat. Don't, don't get to walking every which way. Stay near your seat. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Release a sound of praise to God tonight. God is worthy to be praised. Fellowship is Jesus' week. Chicago is Jesus' week. Virtual ship is Jesus' week. And we have been worshiping God together all week long. Our pastor Meredith, Pastor Charles Jenkins, kicked us off on Sunday morning. And we've been worshiping together 6 a.m. Monday through Thursday. And the Lord has met us in this place every morning at 6 a.m. Some of y'all who had no idea, like, y'all been doing what now? We've been in church 6 a.m. And Dr. Daryl Hall is somebody you better learn the name of. He is a blessing from heaven. Blessed us every night. Monday night, Dr. Gina Stewart. Tuesday night, Dr. E. Dewey Smith Jr. Wednesday night, Dr. Dominique Robertson. And tonight, my brother from another mother has come all the way from Houston, Texas. Y'all show some love to Pastor Keon Henderson and Lady Shawnee Henderson. We are so happy that they are here. Sister Crystal Rucker has been with us all week long. Incomparable is the word you've been, we, we've been using all week long, and she's here, and you're here today, and your presence means so much to us. This is what we do during Jesus Week. We have a Jesus talk, and so we bring a scholar in for five good strong minutes to make us cognitively reflect on what it means to be a follower of Christ. And this week, Dr. Joanne Marie Terrell from Chicago Theological Seminary has been blessing us on the subject of the blood. Y'all get real, real loud, and let's welcome her for the fourth night this week, Dr. Joanne Marie Terrell. You may be seated. Bless you. Grace and peace to all of you. As we conclude the mini lecture series for Jesus Week at Fellowship, let us remember that what we say about God reveals more about us than it does about God. <laughs> Scripture tells us not to bear false witness against our neighbors. And arguably, God is our nearest neighbor because the breath going in and out, in and out of us belongs to God. We cannot take a breath. We can only receive it from the God who shares it with us. That's love. So if we say God is love, let us believe God is love. A loving God reveres and does not require blood. Blood is the substance that God values the most because it enables the gift of life. This is what I want you to remember after these Jesus Week services for 2023 are over. Remember that blood is the fluid that circulates in our vascular systems and carries nutrients to our inner organs and outer extremities. Warm flowing blood enables life in and among human and non-human animals. Therefore, the Creator saw to it that blood is self-contained underneath our skin in a system of capillaries, veins, and arteries. If the pressure and temperature of blood are regulated, and if blood is supplied with the right balance of nutrients, our species can maintain indefinitely our health and vitality and improve our quality of life. But sadly, the development of tools of torture have come a long way since Jesus Christ was crucified around the year 30 AD. From the cross to the pistol, from the musket to the lynching tree, from the first nuclear bombs to drone warfare, from the M16 to the AR-15, 
Human beings have been busy piercing their skin, folks, grieving the heart of God. Raise your hand and keep it up if someone you love has died unjustly as a result of someone else's violence or neglect. Raise your hand and keep it up if someone you love died in an accident or from a stroke or heart attack. Think about the loved ones you have lost and either the blood loss that they experienced or the blood flow that was stopped in them because of their disease. Because cell phones are computers we can take with us everywhere, ask Siri to help you recall the number of black people who have died at the hands of law enforcement. Think about the major conflicts in the world now and all of its past conflicts rooted in unneighborliness that leads to violence. Now I want you to think about the blood that Jesus shed, as well as the blood of the two thieves who hung beside him, as well as the blood of the tens, perhaps hundreds of thousands of people that the Roman Empire crucified. If we do not have a clear grasp of history, if we cannot remember, God remembers all this blood loss grieves it all and reveres it all because God never sanctioned us killing one another. Thou shalt not kill is not just a slogan. It is a declaration by God that God alone is the source of life and God alone has the right of jurisdiction over what happens to every last drop of the most precious substance on earth. God not only remembers, grieves, and reveres the blood that is crying out from the ground, God remembers, grieves, and reveres the blood that was shed during the Ma'afa and slavery, at Hiroshima and Nagasaki, during the era of lynching, during the war, world wars, the Korean War, the Vietnam War, the war in Ukraine, and the wars on children and their families in classrooms and in temples, mosques, churches, and other public spaces. God remembers, grieves, and reveres the blood loss of every one of our loved ones taken by violence and neglect, whoever they were to you and me, my mother included. God also remembers, grieves, and reveres the blood loss of the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. God was in Christ, reconciling the world to God's self. No matter who we are or what we have accomplished or not, no matter the neighborhood where we live or the persons with whom we associate, no matter whether we perceive ourselves as saints or sinners, no one is exempt from the potential for violence perpetrated against them and the blood loss that goes with it. Not even God, who was in Christ Jesus, the Son of God, the Word of God made flesh, who with his disciples offended the religious leaders and offended the Roman government and they crucified him. They placed him on a rugged cross, drove nails in his hands and feet, lifted up the cross and allowed him to suffer to death. Then they pierced him in his side and forthwith came water and blood. Remember too, a thing is worth whatever one is willing to pay for it. Christianity at its best is the religion of the first, second, and umpteenth chance because we who believe in it were, are, and always will be worth it to God. This is precisely why the blood of Jesus will never ever lose its power. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer.
Jesus, he never answered them, for he knew that Satan was tempting him. Oh, if he had come to
Nobody made them. It was a decision. He said, no man takes my life. I lay it down. You can't kill me if I lay it down on my own. Somebody shout, he decided. He decided to die. In your seat were communion elements. We thank Dr. Carolyn Walker and our music ministry for reminding us. I want you to stand all over the building if you're watching on the virtual ship. Isn't it amazing that God makes space for all kinds of people at his table? I'm so glad I don't have to have a college degree. I'm so glad I don't have to live in a mansion. I'm so glad I don't have to have all of my I's dotted and all of my T's crossed to qualify to have a seat at the table. Peter was at the table. Bartholomew was at the table. Former fishermen were at the table. Crooked tax collectors were at the table. And you ought to tell your neighbor, I'm glad I'm at the table. It's some people that didn't want me to be at the table. But God is so awesome, he won't just prepare a table, but he specializes in preparing one in the presence in the presence of your enemies. Eating broke our fellowship in the book of Genesis when Adam and Eve ate from the forbidden tree. Eating broke our fellowship with God and Jesus came to reconnect our fellowship through the communion meal in your hand are elements that have history from the Passover. Unleavened bread and blood. And may this table and the symbol of these who sit at this table be a reminder that I don't have to have it together. He makes space for me. And he calls me his own. And he loves me in spite of me. And he forgives my sins. And he gives me another chance. And another chance. And another chance. And another chance. We used to say he's the God of a second chance until we realized that was a lie. Because if he was the God of a second chance, we would have ran out a long time ago. Somebody's on their thousandth chance right now. But his grace is sufficient. His mercies are new every morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish somebody could think about it on a Monday, Thursday. Just how faithful God is. Pastor Eric Thomas, my Chicago pastor, is with us today, and he will lead us in communion in his own way. At this time, receive Pastor Eric Thomas. Can we say bless the Lord, everybody? Can we give the Lord praise with your mouth? Just tell somebody, I'm glad I'm at the table. Some of you may be like Mephibosheth at the table, but you're still crippled. But I'm still at the table. In spite of my shortcomings, I'm at the table. And as we prepare to commune, my mind went back to Calvary. And I thought about when Jesus was on the cross. The Bible says on either side of him that there were thieves. And one of the thieves cried out and said, if you be the God that you say you are, he says, there's one thing I want you to do is when you come into your kingdom, remember me. And then I thought about the fact that while Jesus was on the cross, he did a whole lot in those last few minutes before he passed away. The Bible says that his hands were nailed to the cross, his feet were nailed to the cross. 
and they even insulted him and they put a crown of thorns on his head. And I thought about the fact that while he was dying, he stopped dying long enough to tell that thief that although your sins be as scarlet, this day, he said all of that while bound, scorched. I thought about the fact that if Jesus could do all of that while his hands were nailed and his feet were nailed, while his head was dripping with blood, if he was powerful enough to do that while dying, I want you to tell your neighbor you got a big chance of making it. Because if he did all of that while dying, the Bible says he got up. And if he did all of that while he was dying, what about now? Because he's not on the cross anymore. But the Bible says he has all power. And it's to tell your neighbor you can make it because he got up one day. And tonight we thank God for the blood. And tell your neighbor because of the blood, my child is going to make it. Because of the blood, cancer is leaving my body. Because of the blood, I'm not going to lose my mind. Because of the blood, whatever's going on with me, the blood has canceled it. Look at somebody and say, the blood has canceled everything that the enemy has tried to do. In other words, he ran interference. Somebody say, glory to God. Come on, lift up the sacraments tonight. And as you begin to take it, I want you to thank God because you're literally, this represents your healing, your deliverance. Everything that you would ever need, remember his suffering. The Bible says he prayed and break the bread and he said, do this in remembrance of me for as often as you do it, you show forth my death until I come again. Let us all commune together in the name of the Lord Jesus. The Bible said in the same like manner, he took the cup. And he blessed it. And he says, this cup represents the new covenant that I've made with you. And this cup represents life. And I don't care what's going on with you tonight. I want you to know there is life in the blood. Glory to God. You said it, doctor. There is life in the blood. And there's a song that we used to sing when I was a little boy. It says this. It says, it reaches to the highest. <laughs> what else does it do? And it flows to the glory to God. We're talking about what? Oh, the blood. Hey, glory to God. That gives me strength. Hey, from day. Let us all commune together in Jesus' name. And it will never lose its power. Come on, let's say it one more time and clap your hands and say it this time. It reaches to the highest. Glory to God. Everybody, lift your voice and say, and it even, glory to God. You know. Oh, oh, oh the blood that gives me strength. Thank you. From day. Today, you may be seated. It will never mm. Come on, sing it like you know it, like you grew up on a first Sunday. It Come 
on, sing it like your grandma used to sing it. And it flows to the Lord. I don't care how low you get. It'll meet you in the valley. Jesus week. Oh, it reaches. It reaches to the house. Come on, let me hear you in the balcony. Listen, it is giving time on the ship tonight, and we thank God for this opportunity to give. Help me thank God for Pastor Eric Thomas of Greater Harvest Baptist Church. Thank you for leading us in communion tonight. I want you to get your best gift in your hand tonight. Everyone who is able, would you join me in a $20 seed on this final night of Jesus Week 2023? Everybody who is able. For those of you that don't have any cash checks on you, look at the lower third of the screen, and we have electronic ways for you to sow on Zelle through Cash App. It is coming across the bottom of the screen for those of you that are worshiping on the virtual ship. Y'all help me thank God for our over flowing down in the champions room tonight we have overflow tonight thank god for those of you who came i was told that at 5 55 there was a line outside wrapped around the church for people ready to get in church tonight i like folk that came ready for a word amen and i want to say thank you this week has been absolutely amazing and i'm grateful for you y'all help me celebrate my mama flew up yesterday from atlanta stand up mama faye show her some love that's my mama in real life. And Bree's mama, Mama Sullivan, flew up today to be with us. And, and I, feel a, I, I feel some kind of way, Pastor Keon, because um, I thought they were coming because I'm preaching on Easter. And I found out from both of them, no, we coming to hear Pastor Keon. <laughs> you just extra this Sunday. But I'm glad they're here. There's a whole lot of us came to hear Pastor tonight, didn't we? because we know we're in for a treat. Get that $20 seated in your hand. If you don't, it's not about equal giving. It's about equal sacrifice. Do what is sacrificial for you on your level, and let's prepare to lift our hands, our phones, our hearts to the Lord. Lift it, lift it, lift it to the Lord. Repeat after me. God, I trust the principles in your word, and I believe you will keep the promises in your word. You said, give, and it shall be given back to us. Get measure, press down, shaking together, running over. You're going to make people bless us. We receive it in Jesus' name. For those of you online that are giving, for those of you giving electronically, go ahead and give right now. But for those of you who have a tangible gift tonight, would you come to the altar and place it there? If you're in the balcony, the, the deacons will serve you in the balcony. But if you're on the floor level, come bring your tangible gift into the offering receptacles at this time. Let's move and give to the God that has given us everything. Thank you for your generosity tonight. Thank you for your generosity tonight. The president of Chicago Urban League is in the house tonight, and we thank God for her, and we thank God for her. I see some deltas and some alphas in the house tonight. I don't know if the Qs are here, but uh, oh, there they are. Amen. There they are. There's always a barker among us. <laughs> it's so good to be in the house. 
God bless you. Never lose. Never lose. It's power. It's power. Never lose. Yeah. Feel old school, never lose. Never lose. It's power. Never lose. Never lose. It's power. It's power. I've been sick sometimes. Never lose. Mentally and physically and spiritually. It's power. But the blood of Jesus. Never lose. Never Thank you. Thank you all for your generosity tonight. It's power. Never lose. Never lose. It's power. It's power. Never lose. Never lose. She came down here to show off them white boots. Look at her. It's power. She, she waited till everybody was through. She said, I'm just messing with you. She y'all give her a hand. She looked good too. Woman of God looked good today. Looking good. That's what I'm talking about. She got her Easter boots on on Thursday. Looking good, woman of God. You better work. Looking good, looking good. Come on, deacons. Come on, deacons. Lift your hands towards these gifts today. Repeat after me, God. We trust you. Multiply these seeds for your glory and for our good. In Jesus' name, amen. Our deacons are coming. Come on, put those hands together. Let's thank God. All week long, we've had an amazing worship experience. There are people behind the scenes. Here's another smooth one. Look at them. Look at them. They waiting on him, and he walks slower. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. Watch the walk. Watch the walk. Watch him. Look at him. Look out. There it is. That's that Chicago swag. You can't buy that. <laughs> when they hold their stomach, you know you're in trouble. <laughs> That's Deacon Michael Evans, our founder son. Y'all can show him some love. I'm so glad the Evans family is still with us. Amen. After all these years, I love them with all my heart. Y'all know I'm just joking. I don't mean none of this. We've had an amazing week. Help me celebrate all the people behind the scenes that have made this week possible. Our staff, our media, our parking lot. Kid Zone is going on right now for our children. If you have a young child, potty train 3 to 11, you can take them over to the second floor for a worship experience on their level. It's been amazing. I'm getting out of the way. Miss Crystal Rucker has been with us all week. She's about to come and bless us. Look to the screen for the for a proper introduction of our guest pastor. And then after the singing ministry, really more so the worship ministry of Miss Crystal Rucker, we will be blessed by the one and only Pastor Keon Henderson. Let the church say amen. Best-selling author and treasured spiritual leader, Keon D. Henderson, is founder, CEO, and senior pastor of the Lighthouse Church and Ministries, one of America's fastest-growing churches, now encompassing five rapidly expanding campuses in Houston, Texas, with more than 15,000 dedicated members and over 900,000 unique weekly viewers worldwide. He was nominated for a stellar award for traditional CD of the year, The River, and his book, The Shift, has inspired people of all genres and backgrounds, recognized by the John Maxwell Institute as one of the top 250 leaders in the nation and nominated for a CNN Heroes Award, Pastor Keon is widely respected as one of the most influential spiritual leaders of our generation. We are honored to have Pastor Keon Henderson at Fellowship Chicago for Jesus Week. Now let's receive the music ministry of the incomparable Crystal Rucker. Come on and clap your hands if you love Jesus. Y'all know the routine. Clap your hands if you love Jesus. Come on and make some noise if you love Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So honored to be here once again, to stand in this spot. I, I would be remiss. I have to say this before I sing. Keep playing. I give honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, but also to the angel of this house, to my friend and my brother, Pastor Reginald Sharp. Wow, wow, wow. I love you. 
not just to him, but to Lady Bree. I love you so much. Thank you so much for allowing me to be here. To our guest pastor, Pastor Keon Henderson, and to Lady Henderson, and to both moms over there. God bless you both. I'm going to sing this. I just want you to worship with me for a few minutes. Do you mind? Do I have any worshipers in here? This song just says, you'll be my God forever. I don't want no other God besides the true and living God to be my God forever. It just says this. I'll trust you in all my ways. Acknowledge your direction you lead me I'll follow you faithful is 
Jesus, Jesus, there is something about that man. I call him, oh, master. And he is my savior. His name is Jesus. Like the friend after the rain. Oh, the rain. Ooh. Jesus. Hit my shit. Jesus, Jesus, let all heaven and earth proclaim kings and kingdoms shall all pass away. But you help me say so oh.
something about the name she It is the sweetest name Sweet she Say it one, one time like this. For he has. Has he done anything for you? He Say, oh my, soul. oh, my soul, and all, and all that he is. Come on, let's all sing it together one more time. For he has. say that the pastor of this church is one of my favorite people on the earth and I'm not just saying it because he's here he is one of the kindest most genuine humble and aware individuals that I've ever met in my life can you praise God for the angel of this house Pastor Sharp I love you man I appreciate you brother would you get up for Lady Bree because she the one that keep him like that. <laughs> Thank God for my wife. She's here with me today. I love you. Thank you for being here. 
And so, Pastor and, and Lady Bree, y'all mama, my mama now, so they came to hear me preach, y'all just get used to it. That's just how that go. They said what they said. That's how it go. And uh, so I thank you all for being here. Can I tell you all, I'm, so I'm from Gary, Indiana, born and raised. Born and raised. So I lived in Gary all the way until 1999 when I moved to Fort Wayne uh, to play basketball in college. But I want to tell you, this lady right here up front, this is Emma. This was my next door neighbor. And uh, her and Rashonda and, and Pete, they're my cousins. I lived next door to them all my life just about, and I slept on their floor. She made me more hot dogs and ham sandwiches. <laughs> and then anybody, we ain't had no food at our house, but May Lee and them always had food, so we went over there. And I just want to thank you, um, you know, over all these years. I'm, I'm thinking about living in apartment five and you living in apartment seven. And uh, to see you here tonight is just a joy. I want to give you this book. I just thought that it would be an honor to give something back to you for all that you have done for me. I love you. Thank you so much. Um, I got another one I want to give away. This is a book I wrote called The Shift. Let me tell you something. Any, anybody an aspiring author? Anybody want to write a book? You an author? Come here real quick with your hand up in the back. I'm talking about I'm an author. Come on up there. When I wrote this book, I released this book on March the 24th, 2020, the day that Houston, Texas was shut down from the pandemic. Had a 3,000 in-person event scheduled to sell this book. They closed us down two hours before the event because of COVID. And I did not get a chance to sell one of these books in person during the pandemic, and yet it was still a bestseller. The reason why I'm telling you that is because you don't need a church. You don't need notoriety. I want you to get out of you what's in you. Because when people ask me why did I write this book, I told them this was the only place that I could find to put my pain. I want you to put your pain on pages. And I want you to sell it all around the world. God bless you. Thank you, man. Come on, y'all give it up for her. God's going to do great things with her. So y'all been having great preaching all week. And um, funny story, true story, up until I just got my office renovated. How long ago did we get offices renovated? Several months ago. One day I was preaching, and I made reference, because I'm from this area, I made reference to a great pastor named Clay Evans and the Fellowship Church. And there was a lady in the audience who said, you know Clay Evans? I said, well, I don't know him personally. I know of him. I'm from Gary. I knew Ferris a lot better than I knew. Oh, y'all know about Clark Road too? Okay. So I've preached at Clark Road a lot. And my dad, Cato Brooks, uh, was good friends with Pastor Ferris. And so I saw him matriculate through life and, and I knew June. and and all of that. And so I, I, I preached and she brought me one of the best gifts I ever had. She brought me a painting of Pastor Evans standing in this pulpit um, in a frame. And up until I just got my office renovated, I've had a picture of this church in my office for the last 10 years. And I can still hear Dr. Evans saying, there is no secret what God can do what he's done for others he'll do for you and to be standing in this place uh, is a full circle moment and the honor of my life and I want to thank you my friend for bringing me back home God bless you and I love you man I thank you go with me to the book of Luke Luke 23 and 43. I'm going to read one verse. <clears throat> and I know I'm in the right place because 
the doctor and the elder and everybody who got up here talked about this and I looked over at my wife and I said yet again another confirmation that I'm in the vein of the Lord and the Bible says and Jesus said unto him notice he didn't say unto them because what God's going to do for you he ain't going to do for them he's just doing it for you tell your neighbor don't get jealous it's just for me this is this for me it's for me and he said unto him, Verily I say unto thee today, this day, thou shalt be with me, or shalt thou be with me in paradise. This is what I want to talk about for a few moments. You'll understand later. I want to talk about the first 48. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The first 48. Seems like I'm not the only one in the room who's familiar uh, with this docu-series uh, that exposes uh, the relentless thirst for blood. It is a documentary show about, of all things, murder and um, 16 cities. Um, but if you've ever watched the show, you've heard the commentator say at the end of the edit these words, the odds of catching a criminal are greatest when, come on, you saying it. Yeah, I'll be watching it too. When law enforcement discovers a lead within the first 48. If you've ever seen any episode, and I, I feel like a few of us have, you've seen the drama play out in the interrogation room. Um, the faces, the faces are blurred. The voices are altered. Seems like they turned the air condition up on purpose because everybody's arms are always in this shirt. They always got a bottle of water and some chips. And somebody lying. Somebody lying. Somebody lying. They're going to ask you, did you know? And they're going to say, I didn't know. They're going to ask them, were you there? They're going to say, I was not there. Uh, but the trouble is, is that most of the time, the officers are asking questions <clears throat> that they already have the answers to. And most of the time, and, and it, it, I have a bias because you don't, you don't see them covering uh, Gianni Versace's murder in Miami. They seem to always find themselves in the neighborhoods where black and brown boys um, are all victimized by the same patterns. Typically, they're all raised by single mothers in areas with school systems that are falling, and I prophesy with your new election, yours are about to change. <laughs> Kids from broken homes. You, you, know, you know the type, right? And, and some of us know exactly what I'm talking about because we are the products of this ASU age and, and, and so these kids are living in areas uh, with high unemployment and, and if their mothers are employed, they're, they're working third shift jobs uh, and so they are gone when the child gets home and, and then sleep when they get back from school. So typically they're raising themselves. You, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Hanging with the wrong crowd. And so all of those, uh, uh, those situations, uh, when they collide, you find a young man who finds, or a young woman who finds solace in a group 
uh, who doesn't have a desire for a description of their future. They are only interested in waking up. They have no plan for waking up tomorrow. Um, and, and so most of the time, as I said, the officers are asking questions that they already know the answers to. And, and, and they ask the boy, uh, were you there? And he says, no, but they don't know that the officer has already triangulated the phone. And the phone tower shows that because they were stupid enough to take their Apple phone with them, <laughs> that, that they were there, or, or they left the phone somewhere thinking they were slick, not recognizing there is something called CCTV. <clears throat> and CCTV is closed circuit television, which means that the government can tap into any camera at any time for the purposes of collecting they have to get a Pfizer warrant but for the purposes of collecting information I saw an episode today he thought he was slick he knew they was gonna trace the car so this fool got on a bike and rode to the murder scene not recognizing he rode past McDonald's on the way home because they don't have a path they only take the one that they know and they don't know that the devil has already set his tricks up on the path that we typically take and so they've seen it they, they've already conducted uh, uh multiple interviews you've seen them snitching haven't you like earl just tell them dog just tell them what happened just tell them earl that they already caught it on tv just he's already taken a plea He's already taken a plea, and so now he's turning his boy in uh, to get off. These are, these are all of the things that we see on the show. And listen, I'm almost done. There, there, there is a pattern. There is a pattern that presumes guilt even though the presumption of innocence is supposed to be the gift of those who are entangled in the law enforcement system. But when I lay this docu-series... Um, and when I laid this episode against the last three years of the life of Jesus, I see why they thought he was guilty. I, I, I mean, you know, I, we know the end. We know he got up out of the grave on the third day morning. And if you stay there, then you will think that he was accused and you will think uh, that he was convicted of something he did not do. But, but if you watch the life of Jesus, he looks just like these boys. First of all, he was born in the hood. He was born in Bethlehem. Uh, one writer says there is no beauty in Bethlehem. And, and in Bethlehem, they didn't live in houses. Most of them lived in modified caves. It was the hood. They had the project. So he was born in the hood. That, that looked like the boys from the first 48 to me. And, and not only that, but his mama got pregnant at 14. And she around here talking about it's the Holy Ghost baby. Now, let your daughter come home at 14 with her stomach protruding. And you say, what? I didn't even know you was doing that. Mama, don't worry. I'm still a virgin. This is the Holy Ghost baby. After you finish beating them. <laughs> Not only that, he ain't never met his real daddy, and he got another dude named Joseph in the house talking about he his father. <laughs> Sleeping in the bed with his mama, and he's only, he, he put a ring on it, but he ain't took her down the altar yet. Because the Bible says they were espoused to be married, which means they were engaged with the intent of being married, but Joseph had not yet walked her down the aisle. He looks like a criminal. Yeah, he hasn't done himself any favors. And then, and, and not, not, not to, 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 to begrudge Jesus, but, but not only that, uh, but he was caught with a prostitute. And when they caught him with the prostitute and he came and they came in the room and saw him, Jesus said, we ain't doing nothing. She washing my feet with her hair. <laughs> Dexter, does that make sense to you? It, it doesn't make sense to me. And on one occasion, they caught him having a conversation with a shyster named Zacchaeus. 
And not only did he have a conversation with Zacchaeus, he spent the night at his house. That looks like criminal behavior to me. So, I'm, I mean, you look at the life of Jesus, we look at the end, we know that he became a great man of God and a great man of faith. But if you look at his early life, he said out of his mouth, I want to be seen with the wicked, the least and the lost. Because I came to seek and save that which is lost. So if you look at Jesus's pattern, then there is no reason that he ended up on the cross. Because your patterns will always lead you to where you hang. No, no. His pattern led him here. Somebody say his pattern led him here. Yeah, yeah. And, and the Bible says that, that eventually they got their life together because the Bible says that Jesus was circumcised on the eighth day. I would submit, Elder, that if we are saved by the blood, that it is time that we stop telling people that we got saved at the cross. Because, Doctor, if we are saved by the blood, then the first time Jesus ever bled was when he was eight days old. The first drop of blood came out of Jesus at the day of the circumcision. So I wasn't saved at the cross only. If I'm saved by the blood, I was saved when he was eight days old, which, by the way, is the number of new beginnings. Just touch somebody. You can say, I feel a new beginning about to happen. He is cut at eight days, which is also the day that Mary and Joseph moved from Bethlehem back to Nazareth where he would be raised. 93 mile walk that Jesus' mother with a screaming, sore, bleeding baby walking 93 miles back to the place where they're supposed to be. And the Lord told me to pause and tell you that you still have to move on after you've been cut. Oh, y'all ain't going to talk to me today. I won't be long, but I'm going to give you what I got. Some of us stop where we get cut. Some of us pause where we get cut. But Jesus shows us that you are still required to get to the next place even though you bleed in. Just touch somebody and say, you got to lead while you bleed. Stop allowing that cut to make you stay in Bethlehem when your assignment is in Nazareth. I'm talking to 93 people in here today. You came in this church bleeding and the devil made you think that it was your season to stand still. And I came all the way from Houston to tell you that even though you cut, you still got to walk. Look at your girlfriend or your homeboy in the face and say, you can either quit or you can move on. But I don't know about you, but I'm a walk. I'm a walk. I don't know who this is for. I'm a walk. I'm going to do it with my feelings hurt. You, you ain't going to hurt my feelings and keep me out of my destiny. You're not going to talk about me and make me quit on my dreams. You're not going to look at me funny and I ain't going to come back to church. I'll dress up so you can see me so you have something to look at next week. But I'll be back. Touch somebody and say, I'm going to make it. I'm just telling you that Jesus, it don't look so good when I look at the first 48 because now he's no longer eight days old, he's 12. And now he sets off the first Amber Alert and runs away. He's a runaway child. The Bible says that his mom and daddy looking for him and he done went back to the custom of the feast. And by the way, when they get there, they find out he's in subordinate school because instead of sitting there being taught by the teachers, he's in class teaching the doctors and the lawyers. So now he looks like a class clown. And if he's a king, why is he a carpenter? And then when he's 30, he too big for his britches because in John chapter 2, the Bible says that the wine had run out. And his mama said, hey boy, get these people some more wine. Let me tell you how I know he starts submitting himself. He said, woman, my time ain't come. She said, oh, he going to do what I said. Y'all just do whatever he says. Jesus, come here, boy. I don't care who you think you are. Yeah, you can walk on water and all of that, but I brought you in and I'll take you out. You see that water got turned into wine, didn't you?
now, now, if you look at his pattern, is Jesus looking innocent? Run away, back talking, thief hanging, prostitute finding, preacher. How many of y'all would go to church with Jesus if he was the pastor? No wonder he's hanging on the cross. No wonder he's in the interrogation room of Golgotha. Because his pattern has led him to this place at the cross. And now he's hanging in between two thieves. Two thieves with two different backgrounds. Two sets of decision making both still to survive neither respect of the people's property neither a respects people's sense of privacy because they're thieves they take stuff that doesn't belong to them and both of them have the same accessory across but one of them allows himself to be sucked in by the crowd he starts shouting with them yeah, crucify him. Crucify him. He's saying, crucify him. And I'm amazed that Jesus is hang hanging in between two thieves who both see the same scene but yet come away with different perspectives. Now, 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 are y'all still with me? Are you still with me? They, they come away. And this is biblical because Cain and Abel grew up in the same house. They ate at the same table. They wore the same clothes. And yet they saw two different things. These thieves on the cross and one of them sees something else and one of them sees another thing. And then the Lord told me to tell you that just because people have the same experience doesn't mean they'll come away with the, with the same perspective. When Mary and Martha were at the house, when Jesus came back, one of them thought that they should start cleaning and another one thought that they should start praising. And you got to stop trying to make people think like you. Oh, listen, do me a favor and touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, yeah. God told me to tell you me that growing old yeah. is mandatory, yeah. but growing up yeah. is optional. Yeah. Two totally different perspectives. The king of kings is there about to change the world. And one joins the crowd and says, crucify him. And the other one says, you know what? I don't know what he's talking about. But just remember me when you come into your kingdom, which was the second lesson. Never hang with people who can't make up their own mind. Come on, y'all. Touch your neighbor and say, can you make up your own mind? Because I don't, what, what I'm getting ready to do in my life, I don't need to be sitting next to somebody who's going to go with the crowd. I don't need anybody in my life who's going to go with the flow. You knew me before they start talking about me, so don't change your mind about me after they start lying on me. And let me tell you something. This is the way you know you're on your way up when they try to crucify you. Touch your neighbor and say, I'm on my way up. I'm on my way up. Matter of fact, look at them right now and say, I'm on my way up. Don't ask me for my phone number next week. Don't tell me I'm cute next month. Don't tell me you like my clothes because if you ain't talking to me now, I don't want to hear from you next week. No, no, no. If you won't holler at me on a bus pass, don't holler when I got a Bentley. Don't try to talk to me. I'm on my way. I'm just looking for 50 people who understand that by this time next week, you won't be in the same situation you're in right now. Slap three people and tell them I'm on my way up. Or you got the wrong neighbor. Look at somebody who don't look jealous, somebody who don't look sleepy, somebody who ain't mad that it's your season. Tell them, neighbor, I'm on my way up. I'm going up in my money. I'm going up in my thoughts. I'm going up in my business endeavors. I'm going up in my worship. Somebody shout, I'm going up.
I'm going up. I'm going up. You can stay if you want, but I'm going up. But you, you, you can stay here if you want to, but I'm going up. You can stay an employee if you want to, but I'm about to be a boss. I'm just looking for somebody. You can stay average if you feel like it, but I'm about to break records. Who am I talking to in here? If we don't get to no other point in this message, can somebody on this Thursday recognize that you one day from going up? Thief is hanging on the cross and he refused, he refuses to follow the crowd. He like, bro, I, I heard about this baptism stuff. I don't know, but just if you is who you say you is, can you just remember, brother? <laughs> just remember me when you come into your kingdom. He even looks at the other criminal and says, I know we share the same values, but as far as I can see, this man has done no wrong. And that's a shouting point. Because there are some of you all in here right now that somebody's trying to mess up your reputation. But God told me to tell you he's about to send an eyewitness. Oh, you didn't hear it. Just, just wait. It, and it took him 33 years to get here, but God says, I'm about to send somebody to clear your name. I don't know who this is for. I'm talking to somebody who's facing a life sentence. Somebody in here, their cancer's trying to take you out. Somebody's dealing with fibroids and tumors. Somebody's dealing with back pain right now and bulging discs. Somebody's got a hernia. Somebody's got something going on in your life right now and you don't know how you're going to make it. But God told me to tell you that he's about to deliver you. Matter of fact, tell your neighbor, I'm an eyewitness and I got an announcement for you. You're blessed. Yeah, you got the wrong neighbor. They, they so stressed out, they don't even know when to shout. Look at somebody and tell them, you healed. Yeah, you got the wrong neighbor. Turn and find somebody else. I bet just get them, tell them, you're rich. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. see, see, you shouting about rich, but if you dead, you can't spend no money. You better tell, I, I'm talking about health, and you up here shouting about money. Anybody glad that your kidneys are working? Anybody glad your heart is beating? Anybody glad that your liver's functioning? Anybody glad that you still got your right mind after all the hell you've been through? I gotta go. But I'm, I'm, just, I'm just impressed by how this thief separated himself from the person he was next to. See, in this service, all I'm trying to do is to get you to separate yourself from the people on your row who ain't said amen yet. Matter of fact, just look down your row and say, uh, neighbor, this is a praise section. If you ain't got one, you can go stand outside. There's about three seats in the balcony. Go have one of them. But as for me and my row, we gonna shout up in the ship tonight. I need you over the next 30 seconds to open up your mouth and give your God some praise. Shout it, yeah! They sitting here looking at you. They don't know all the hell you've been through. They don't know you almost quit. They don't know you almost gave up. They don't know that you grew up in the same environment. Had it not been for the Lord on your side, you would not be here today. You need to stop acting stuck up and lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up ye everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall, who is this King? Touch your neighbor. I'm just separating myself. I'm just separating myself. I'm just separating myself because there's a miracle in the room and I don't want to be like the negative thief. I want to be like the one that said, if you remember me, I'm separating myself. He said, he said, he said, remember me. See, the reason why he said remember me because he knew that things always happen when God remembers. Look at what happened when he remembers Sarah. 
Sarah went all of those years and couldn't have a baby. God said, Sarah, all of a sudden, Come here, come here, Noah. It's raining. And the Bible says that God remembered. Somebody say, Lord, remember me. Abraham couldn't produce a baby until the Lord remembered him. The Hebrew boys were just about to be burned until the Lord stepped in and Daniel was just about to be eaten until the Lord Remembered him. Joseph was put in the pit, left for dead. But he eventually got to the palace because the Lord remembered, 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 remembered. As often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Can, can I just tell you, when the Bible says that God says, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me, he was not talking about cognitive thinking. When God said, remember me, you have to go to the New Testament and find out that he says that we are all members of the same body. So in the diaspora of Christianity, as we have been spread out in our ideology, when the Bible says that as often as you do this, remember me, he's talking about not cognitive thinking, but coming back. That's why the Bible says bone came to bone and skin came to skin because the purpose of communion is to bring the body. And the reason why the devil is winning is because we keep operating broken and God says, I'm trying to get you whole again. Remember me. Remember me. We've got to, we've got to, the purpose of this week is for us to come back together. They got us torn apart with our denominations. They got us torn apart with sexism. They got us torn apart with racism. They have us torn apart with theology. They have us torn apart with all of these ideologies. And there is only but one Lord. One faith. One baptism. I don't care if you Kojic or Baptist, you still need some blood. Oh, you ain't going to hear me. I don't care if you're Presbyterian or Methodist. The blood still works. Touch somebody and say the blood still works. I feel an old school thing coming on me. Just look at somebody and say, do Lord, do Lord. Do remember me. Anybody glad that God remembers? They used to say, it's not my mother, not my father, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Lord, remember me. <laughs> Pastor, it wasn't until recently that I saw something that I never saw before. All of my life, I've been preaching that there were two thieves on the cross. I submit to you today that I see another thief. There is, there is another thief in the text. There is another thief in the text. The two thieves known extra biblically as Dismas and Justus, uh, the thieves that were hanging on the cross, Dismas was the one that confessed his sin and asked God to remember him. Jesus said that thou shalt be with me in paradise. Now, I think that this scene challenges the church and that challenge is that not only did Jesus hang on the cross, he hung in between two thieves. Now, now let me just say this to the church. The problem is, is we get saved and we can no longer hang in between dysfunction. See, all of a sudden we get saved. I can't hang with people who negative no more, but, but we hung around your butt when you was negative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We hung around you when you was out there tripping. We hung out with you when, well, I don't want to name all the stuff. I will fight y'all, every one of you by myself. But isn't it amazing how when all of a sudden we get our life together, we can't hang. I got to clean my life up. I got to get all the negativity out. I can't handle toxic people. But we had to handle you. Well, all of a sudden when you get your life together, everybody in your life got to have it together. Come here. 
How at your boy. You can't get so saved that you can't hang in between the thieves. This is why Jesus had the kind of men he had around him because you need some Christians in your life, but sometimes you're in the garden of Gethsemane and you need a dude that brought a knife. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, I, I know all of y'all say, but how many of y'all still got at least 5% hood left in you? You can shout, but if somebody say the wrong thing to you right now, you will take them earrings out of your ear, put some Vaseline on your face, and get to swinging. This is Chi Town. Holler at your boy. <laughs> we, we get in church and we just, hi, how are you? And then you want to change your voicemail and, and, and have Donna McClurkin, we fall down. But we get up, hello, thank you for calling Suzanne. Leave a message. I pray that you're blessed in the city and blessed in the field. Blessed when you come and blessed when you go. At the, town, at the Holy Ghost tone of the beat, leave a message in Jesus' name, amen. Just five years ago, you had bump and grind right on the same voicemail. I don't see nothing wrong. Don't you get so heaven bound you ain't no earthly good. Don't you forget that you got saved from something. Everybody in here ex something. Oh, holler at me. You an ex, uh, ex liar, an uh, ex. Some of y'all ain't saying amen because you a current something. I, I'm a, cool breeze, I'm going to get it together, man. Jesus is in between the dysfunction because what's the purpose of going up if you can't take somebody with you? The key to your success is not only hanging around people who have it together. The key to your success is do you have enough anointing to change the perspective of somebody near you? Is there something about you that makes somebody want to be like you? Or are they already like you and you don't like them because you don't like you? He hung right in between them. You don't want to go? You want to go? All right, you can go. This day, not tomorrow. This day, not next week. Because I came to prophesy it's going to happen faster than you thought it was. Look everybody down your room and tell them, this is the week, 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 this is the week the debt is going to fall off. This is the week you're going to get the promotion. This is the week. Pastor, it's already Thursday. That means God got one day to perform. This is the week. This is the week. I'm looking for somebody to tell somebody this is the week. Not next week, not next month. This is the week. If you believe this is the week that God is about to change your life, I'm going to give you 30 seconds to open up your mouth and give them glory. I can't hear nobody in fellowship. Open up your mouth and give them glory. Did you hear what I said? Give your neighbor a high five and shout neighbor. God told me to tell you this is the week that your life is about to turn around. Did y'all hear what I said? Give your neighbor a high five and shout neighbor. God said uh, this is the week that your life is about to turn around. Did they shout? You got the wrong neighbor. Turn to another neighbor. Shout neighbor. This is the week that your life is about to turn around. Did they shout? 
then you got the wrong neighbor. Turn to somebody else and shout, neighbor, this is the week that you're about to go to the next level. Now say, neighbor, you may be wondering why I keep turning around. Here is the reason every time I turn around, he keeps on blessing me. Every time I turn around, he gives me new mercy. Every time I turn around, he gives me new grace. Shout yeah! I told myself I wasn't going to do this. I thought I told you that I saw another thief. One thief stole possessions. The other thief stole money. But there's a third thief. His name is Jesus because he stole the victory from death. He stole the sting from death and the victory from the grave. He stole my soul from hell. Is there anybody in here that wants to give God the glory? Open up your mouth and shout yes. Shout yes. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. My soul said yes. I believe y'all alone. But I used to do this at my church in Gary, Indiana. Tree of Life Missionary Baptist Church. 2323 West 11th Avenue. Every time we preached, our preacher told us that we did not preach the gospel until we said he died. Didn't he die? He died one Friday, but early one Sunday morning, he got up out of the grave with all power. Give your neighbor a high five and shout, he died until the sun refused to shine. He died ah, till the moon ran down in blood. He died till the earth reeled and rocked like a drunken man. But that's not how the story ends. In three days, uh, he rose again. That's love. Shout yeah. Shout yeah. There's a third thief in the text. And his name is Jesus. And you better be glad he's a thief. You better be glad that he took your sins without permission. He could have hung in between two of anything. But if he wanted us to know he steals too. And after my investigation into the first 48, I find him not guilty. truth is neither are you because of this week you did it but you're not guilty not only did he take your sins but he threw them into the sea of forgetfulness for there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. But it doesn't mean that those who are in Christ Jesus don't condemn themselves. Here you are, locked in a room with the door wide open. Locked in the thoughts that somebody has about you did it look like Jesus cared what they thought he was about his father's business don't you get distracted 
by the people on Palm Sunday. Because it will be those same ones who will say crucify him. So then the goal of your mission can't be to change anybody's mind. He didn't care what they said about him. Yes, I was with a prostitute. Yes, I hung with murderers and thieves and liars. The quicker you get to the point where you say, yes, I did, the quicker you can get to, yes, he can. My goal was to get you out of the guilt and let you know that God doesn't see you like you see yourself. They called you a thief. He called you his own. They called you a liar. Oh, you, you've been called names before. It matters not what they said about you. God has a plan for your life. And stop watering yourself down because they can't handle you at 100 proof. We're not just coming together for Holy Week to talk about his transformation and we, we stay the same. I'd rather have God and not need him than to need him and not have him. Is there anybody in this room who, who felt like that thief? That you were not enough? That you'd done too much for him to come and see about you? that you really started listening to the opinions of other people and you did not hear what God said about you. They call you one thing and he says, you are my handiwork. He says that you are sons and daughters. He's the lily of the valley. He's the bright and morning star. You know why they called him the lily of the valley? Because a lily is the tallest flower. But if you look at a lily, it always has his head hung. This is the picture of Jesus on the cross. This is why he's the lily of the valley. Like a rose trampled on the ground hold somebody's hand you took the fall and thought of me above all like a rose trampled on the ground you took the fall and thought of me. Everybody lift your voice say, like a rose trampled on the ground you took and thought of me. One more time say, like a rose Traveled on, you took, thought of me above, above. Can you see Jesus? Silent until this moment. If you notice, the old song says he never said a mumbling word. But when he gets to the cross, he's very talkative, showing us 
Don't waste your words. Save them for when it's time. He spoke seven times on the cross. After that, he said, it's finished. He gave up the ghost. Father, into thy hands, I commend my spirit. And he was done talking. He didn't have to talk. Because when he got up on the third day, his resurrection was going to do all the talking. Now watch this. If you look at the text, you find out that when Jesus is put in the tomb, None of his disciples show up except for the woman, and that was afterwards. But yet, his enemies had two guards at the entrance of the tomb. My question for you is, if you thought he was dead, why would you have anybody guarding a dead man? And then the Holy Spirit told me to give you the revelations. It's because your enemies believe in you more than your friends. Touch your neighbor and say, you've been thanking the wrong people. You've been thanking God for your friends, but you need to thank God for your enemies. The Bible says that God had two disciples. One of them was named Peter. The other one was named Judas. And the Bible says that when Judas cut the man's ear off, Jesus said to Peter, Satan! get thee behind me how would Jesus call Peter Satan he's defending him and yet when Judas betrays him he says friend whatever you came to do do it quickly your friends are not people who pat you on your back your friends are people who get you to your cross Touch three people say, you've been thanking the wrong people. You need to thank the man who divorced you. You need to thank the parent that walked out on you. You need to thank the person who didn't understand your value. You need to thank the man who broke up with you. You need to thank the person who fired you. You need to thank the person who lied on you. Your friends are not your helpers. Your enemies are. That's why David said, it was good that I was afflicted. Stop thanking people who are nice to you. Start thanking the people who got you crucified. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh upon this place. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh upon this place. Lord, I don't know what you wanted to accomplish in this room other than the fact to let them know that you don't mind hanging in between thieves because you are one yourself. Thank you for stealing the victory from the grave. Thank you for stealing the sting out of death. Thank you that no weapon formed against us shall be able to prosper and thank you that we are one day away from going up. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe it, come on and erupt with a sound of praise all over this place. Come on, you can do it. Come on, come on. I can't hear you. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, he's worthy to be praised. Come on, fellowship, you can do better than that. Shout until they hear you on the south side. Shout until they hear you on the north side. Shout until they hear you in Indiana. Shout until they hear you in Michigan. Shout until the waters tremble. Shout! 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 Somebody's about to get a breakthrough. Somebody's about to get a... So I see it right now. Somebody's about to get a breakthrough. You got three minutes. It's almost time. Somebody's about to get a breakthrough. Cancer's about to fall out of your body. I, I feel it in the Holy Spirit. What am I, son? I feel it right now. Something's about to happen. Something's about to happen. I feel this whole section about to shake. Something is about to happen. Some of you all are ready to get home, but the angel just started troubling the water. Something's about to happen. Something's about to happen. Something's about to happen. Something's about to happen.
give your neighbor one last declaration. Tell them the next time you see me, I promise you I'll be up. I'll be up. I'll be up. When I left this area and went to Houston, Pastor Sharp, the pastor of the church raised an offering for me because my mother couldn't send me to college. He raised an offering and the members stuffed all these dollar bills into a you know, those old school manila envelopes. Y'all know them big yellow ones? I'm talking about the one that had the... the, the... Now, it wasn't new. Not, the, not the, the little metal one. I'm talking about the string. I got to Fort Wayne. And, and this man right here can verify because... I, I, was, I was wearing his shoes until, I, I was wearing your shoes all the way up to a size 10 because once I got to 11, I couldn't wear his shoes no more. My foot had outgrown, so I was wearing pro wings. Y'all too, y'all, y'all too rich for that. I was wearing pro wings in stadiums and all that. Y'all pay less, yeah. So I know you know, I know you know. So I'm wearing pay less shoes and I remember having to play basketball and pay less shoes, but they ain't got no grip, so I be trying to cross over. Next thing you know, I'm outside. Because I done slid all the way across the whole court. I'll never forget, I, I, my mother bought me a pair of shoes from Payless, and the day I played them, the whole heel came off. And that man right there would go to the store and buy me gym shoes, and he would get me Meslins to wear to church. And I had a suit from Backrack. Yeah, you know. And I knew how to match it up because the jacket was blue and black, but I put, sometimes I put white pants on it, sometimes I put black pants on it, sometimes no collar, sometimes a collar. Y'all remember the Michael Jordan collar that came? So I, I switched it up. I only had about two or three suits, but I knew how to flip it up. And that man right there, I slept on his floor, and he fed me, and he put clothes on me. When I left here, I was doing bad. One day I get to go to Orlando, Florida, and I see a preacher named Bishop Jakes. And I'm walking out of a restaurant called Jay Alexander, and I can't really afford to be there because they all eating steak, and I know I can't eat steak, so what I do is I go in, and you know they're going to give you bread for free and water. But I'm, I'm in the room, I'm in the right place, but I ain't got the right stuff. And so I'm getting ready to walk out of the room, and all of a sudden I hear a voice say, hey, somebody stop that young man. And I turn around, and it's, it's, it's Bishop Jakes. And, and I say, who, me, sir? He said, yes, you. He said, come here. And he looked at me, and he said, you've been praying and asking God to meet me. I said, yes, sir, ever since I was 14 years old said my mother used to pray it over my life that one day I have it written in the book that I will be a trusted son of Bishop T.D. Jakes I said that when I didn't even know where he lived because of that meeting I got invited to a birthday party that he had and all of the preachers was driving up in their Lincolns and in their Cadillacs y'all remember back in the day when every preacher had a Lincoln and a Cadillac I was driving a 1996 Buick Regal. Turquoise exterior, gray interior, dual climate control with a cracked grill. And I drive up in my little, my little Buick and, and they all up there taking an offering for the bishop for his birthday and they said, I'm going to give 25000 and I'm going to give 50000 Now, I told you I'm in the Buick Regal. 1996, 98,000 miles on it. I had $111 in my pocket. And I took that $111 out and I shook his hand and I said, happy birthday. I said, sir, I don't have much, but such as I have, give I unto thee. And I said to him, I said, sir, this $111 is a down payment. Would you please allow me to be a liability until I can become an asset? <laughs> I 
And because of that $111, planting that seed in that man, I have preached all over the world. <laughs> Pastor John Hanna will tell you, I preached, in, I preached in Africa with him at least four or five times. I've preached in Australia. I've preached in England. I've preached, I've preached in 42 out of the 50 states. I've preached all over the world. And it started with an $111 seed when nobody knew my name because let me tell you something. Some of you all are in a cycle right now and you're trying to stop it with prayer, but sometimes the seed is the only thing that can stop a cycle. Ask any woman in here how she got pregnant. She did not get pregnant by prayer. She got pregnant by a seed. And the moment she got pregnant, if everything was all right and she was healthy, the cycle stopped. Because the seed is a sign that you no longer need that cycle. You're about to produce something. And I know you've already given, but I feel like I'm on assignment right now. Because let me tell you, from that $111, if I told you what God has done for me, it would sound like I'm bragging. I'm not going to do it. I just need you to know that he has taken me from where I was laying on his floor with no bed to giving 40 beds away during Hurricane Harvey to people who had no place to sleep. All because of a seed. If there's anybody who believes that a kid from Gary, Indiana, whose mother worked at Taco Bell, and Zales. You remember that, Emma? I have eaten more chili cheese hot dogs than anybody in this room, more Choco Tacos and more Hawaiian Punch than anybody alive. When I used to stay in a hotel, we used to stay in the Red Roof Inn. I thought it was the Rich Carlton. The other day, Pastor Sharp, I went to the Red Roof Inn. It's an abandoned Red Roof Inn in Houston, Texas. I went to the Red Roof Inn to take a picture uh, for some promotional stuff that we're getting ready to do. Let me tell you how good God is. I've stayed in the Red Roof Inn all of our lives. I go to this abandoned Red Roof Inn, and when I get there, the owner of Red Roof Inn is in the parking lot. And now I got the phone number of the man who owns the franchise of Homewood Suites. And now I want to find out from him, how can we build a, how can I help you build the hotels I used to stay in? Because you need to stop praying and ask God to live in it. You need to ask God, can you own the places where they live? I'm going to ask you to do two things. Either you got $11 or $111. If you believe that the anointing on my life can be transferred in this room today, and if you think that it is possible for God to do for you what he has done for me. Now, if this ain't for you, please don't discourage anybody else. Because if I ain't talking to you, I ain't talking to you. Because obviously this church has survived this long. It don't need $11. But you do. You need the glory that's about to fall in this house right now. Because there's somebody who's about to throw a seal over your tomb. And you need to sow into your resurrection. If you haven't... I want you to come to this altar. I'm going to pray for you right now. If you believe it, just stay with me because I don't want you to leave. I'm going to pray an extraordinary anointing on you. I've been praying at our church. People's student loans have been disappearing. If you're in this place, come on, just come forever. And stay with me. Don't leave. Forever You sing me through Lift your voice and say for every you you sing me through
I want you to lay it on the steps, but not, with, not without me praying for you. Listen to me right now. I want you to believe. Now, this will only work if you believe. One of the problems in the scripture is that there were too many unbelieving believers. Faith without works is. I want you to believe that whatever debt you have, God is about to cancel it. Your children will not need to be great athletes to go to college. You're, you're going to have the kind of wealth where you can buy your mama a house. Come on, somebody. You won't be afraid to go to the doctor because you don't have insurance. I'm talking about tumors drying up. I'm talking about sicknesses and diseases and addictions being eliminated. Who believes it? Right now, God, in the name of Jesus, I cast down every imagination and every power of wickedness that comes up against the people of God and who the Son has set free is free indeed. And God, we're not going to wait until the seed is sown to shout. We're going to shout in advance, believing that no weapon that has been formed against us will prosper. Now, I need everybody who's free in this place to open up your mouth and give him glory. Come on, fellowship. I can't hear you. Give them glory. Place your gifts on the altar. Place your gifts on the steps. I cast you free. I command it in the name of Jesus. I command you healed. I command you free. I command your sanity in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 You can place your gift and go back to your seat. Place your gift and go back to your seat. And every time you take a step, I want you to know that you're one step closer to your destiny. Every time you step, just know you're one step closer to your destiny. There is no condemnation. You are the righteousness of God. You are the lender and not the borrower. You're the head and not the tail. You're above and never beneath. I need you to say it like you mean it. Somebody say, I'm the lender, not the borrower. I'm the lender, not the borrower. I don't need the bank. I am the bank. I don't pay interest. I make interest. Oh, I wish I had somebody who believed it. I wish I had somebody believed it. Anybody ready to change Chicago? Has God given you the anointing to change your city? Somebody's about to have the money to revitalize the whole neighborhood. Come on, somebody, you about to go back and buy the house you grew up in and the five houses to the left and the right. And you're going to change the whole block. Thus is the word of the Lord. I speak the spirit of Clay Evans in this house, that you will buy up everything around you, that you will start out small, but you will finish big and build something big enough to hand over to your shark. Y'all not listening. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. lot of millionaires about to pop up in this church yes sir touch your neighbor say I'm one of them yes God yes God you ain't never gonna have to beg to pay no cell phone bill once you get to the point where you realize paying a car note ain't no miracle people do that every day I don't want you praying for no rent I want you praying for stuff that matters we're going to be praying about cancer. We ain't praying about no mortgage. Money answereth all things. Do I have anybody in here today? Yes, sir. I'm going to release this mic to the set man in this house. And your last instruction is to praise God for the vessel that he has placed in the ship. He's going to be coming and preaching in Houston for us in October. And if it's all the same, how about you bring the ship toward the lighthouse?
Come on and bless God for the man of God. Somebody release any kind of praise in this house. I said release a praise for all that's been spoken over you, your family. Pastor Hannah, Pastor Hannah, Pastor Hannah, I just want you to just whisper a word of prayer over this house. You can't be in the house and we not hear your voice. You're too important to this city. You're too important to this world. Can you seal this night with a prayer? I know you don't want to. You're tired. You came to chill. But he's going to seal this thing with a prayer. Listen, if you don't know Jesus before he comes, if you don't know Jesus Christ, listen, the way Pastor Keon Henderson talked about him tonight, I would want to know a Jesus that'll hang out with me when my stuff is all jacked up. I don't know who's in this room, but I need you to say yes to Jesus. It's bigger than a church. If fellowship is not the church for you, we'll get you to the church you're supposed to be. But I need you, if you don't have your business fixed with Jesus, come shake my hand tonight. All this preaching, all this prophesying, if you need a fresh start, come tonight. If you just need to be under watch care, you got a church home back home, but you in this city and you out here struggling by yourself, come on, you, you need a place where you can call home. Come on, stand right there, my sister. Come on, come on. Whatever it is, you need a covering, you need Christ, you need a church, you need some changes. Come on, make a move, make a move tonight, make a move tonight, make a move tonight. Stop wondering, are they going to look at me? Forget who's looking at you. God is looking at you. That's the only one that matters. We have two that have come. Is there anybody else? I can't linger here long. Come on, I see somebody else coming. Come on, brother. Come on. Y'all see the thief working? Do y'all see the center thief working? Snatching souls from hopelessness and death and despair. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Is there anybody else that needs Christ or church home changes or just a covering? That's what I'm asking for. Come on, I see you, my sister. Look at the brother who was sitting at the table walking down the aisle. God bless you. Yeah, there's a room at the cross for you. If, if, yeah, oh, Lord, have mercy. I, I feel an old school anointing on a new school night. There is room. And cross for you there is room 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 at the cross for you though millions millions have come there's still room room for one, there is room. That's Reverend Clay Evans. Y'all know nothing about that. At the cross. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. What I'm trying to tell you is there's space for you. What I'm trying to tell you is there's grace for you. What I'm trying to tell you is there's peace for you. There's power for you. There's forgiveness for you. There's another chance for you. Can we thank God for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven that have come, eight, nine, ten, eleven, come on. God bless you, God bless you. You coming too? God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. You coming too? Twelve that have come. Can we thank God for twelve that have come? God bless you, my little brother. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Is there anybody else? Is there anybody else? Anybody else? Come on, come on. <laughs> come on, my sister. Let me hug you. Let me shake your hand. 
Yes, 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 yes. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, little mama. God bless you, my sister. Y'all, y'all do know this is what it's all about, right? I know it's a little late, but but this is why we've been fasting for 40 days. This is this is why we've been at the 6 a.m. service. This is why the prayer team has been interceding so that lives can be changed. Come on, let me shake your hand. Let me shake your hand. Let me shake your hand. God bless you. You thought I was worth saving. I don't know who's going to sing it, but somebody get a mic and sing it. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Anybody else? We thank God for you. Our first touch ministry is going to minister to you, and they're going to get some information to you and from you. I want you to walk with them at this time. Walk with them at this time. Fellowship Chicago, virtual ship. Come on, help me thank God. Yeah, God is healing in this house. Come on, come on, y'all. Shout like it's your son. Shout like it's your daughter. Come on, everybody, to your feet. We going home. So you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. What did he do? What did he do? So you cleaned me up inside. You thought I was to die. What did he do? So you sacrificed your life. Come on, let me hear you. So I could be free. So I could be whole. So I could tell everyone I know. You know I was worth saving. Everybody say. So you sacrifice So I can be free Yeah Yeah You thought I You thought I was worth saving Oh You came to change my life You thought I was worth saving So you clean me up inside Tell the person beside you, I'm glad I sat by you tonight. Tell them it feels good to sit this close to a testimony. I want to pause real quick before Pastor Hannah closes us out in prayer. Chicago, we got a new mayor. Mayor-elect Brandon Johnson. And one of the ladies that were behind him working to make sure the right person got in the seat is in the room today. The president of Chicago's Teachers Union is worshiping with us tonight. Y'all show some love to Mrs. Stacy Davis. She's in the room with us tonight worshiping. Whisper to me, she listens to your messages every morning. It helped her get through the campaign helping Brandon Johnson win. Listen, the president of Chicago Urban League, Miss Karen Freeman Wilson, was in the back. She sat at the table with us. I don't know if she's left already, but y'all show her some love. She was in the room today. And so many people that came out tonight, Pastor Hannah, close us out. Pastor Keon, as long as I live, I will never forget the impartation that you have made in this house tonight. Chicago is better. Our church is better. My life is better. The world is better. Y'all help me show some love for the gift. The gift. A gentle giant in the spirit. We love you. We thank you, Lady Shawnee. We got you back forever. And then to the... To Pastor Everything. We love you, Pastor Hannah. Close us in prayer. You, I didn't come here for this. I was in the balcony hiding, and some thugs came upstairs and made me some thugs. Came upstairs and got me to the front. I really came here just to support you. 
and to let you know that I love you and I celebrate you. And I'm grateful that God sent you to Chicago. I mean that with everything that's in me, I am so glad that God pulled you out of Georgia and made you come to Chicago. And we want you to know that your sacrifice has not been in vain, that you've made our city a better place. Can we celebrate him, you all, for real? We honor you and your wife to my brother and my sister, to Keon and his lovely wife. We travel together preaching the gospel, and I'm grateful for divine connections. I'm going to close out, and I need you to hear me. It's resurrection week. So you should be looking for something to get up in your life. There's some things that were dead that God's ready to bring life back into. Hear me clearly. It was never dead. It was only sleep. But it's about to be awakened before Sunday. Your name is about to be brought up. Your business is about to be revived. Your resume is about to be pulled and favor's about to hit your life. Come on, I believe in divine, just speaking things. And when you speak it, it becomes your reality. If you speak it, you'll see it. If you speak it, you'll touch it. If you speak it, you'll live it. But I need you to make sure you got somebody next to you that you can connect with. To your right and your left, tell your neighbor, it's about to be my turn. Come on, say that again, it's about to be my turn. And I decree and I declare before something before Sunday, something's about to get up in my life. Come on, if you believe that, release a sound of praise right there. Okay, grab your neighbor by the hand, let's pray. So God, we honor you, we magnify you, we glorify you. You're God, you're great, you're excellent, you're holy, you're magnificent, you're wonderful. You are the great God, you're the great I am, you're the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. You're the one that give us breath, you're our foundation, you're our high tower, you're our secret place, you're everything. You're our ancient of days and we give you glory on tonight. We thank you for this week because it is a divine week for us. We speak to those things that were dead and we decree and we declare that they are coming back to life. Something's about to stand up in my house. Something's about to stand up in my business. Something's about to stand up in my body. Something's about to stand up in my finances. I decree and I declare that this will be a resurrection week for all of us under the sound of my voice. By this time next week, God, let it already be brought back to life. In the name of Jesus, cover us as we go to our homes. When somebody get home, let them walk into a resurrection situation. When somebody go to work, let something be brought back to life. And we thank you that you'll get all the glory, you'll get all the honor. We would never take your praise. We'll never take your glory. We'll just give you the biggest praise we've already had. We've been holding on to a praise waiting on our resurrection. So we thank you in advance that it's about to happen in our lives. And we thank you that you're going to cover us, protect us as we go home to our various destinations. You're going to bring us back at your own appointed time. And when we come back, we're going to come back with a testimony and a praise. On the count of three, release your praise and consider yourself dismissed. One, two, three, go! May your struggles keep you mid across. May your troubles show that you need God. May your battles end the way they should. May your bad days prove that God is good. I pray your whole life keeps on proving that God is good. It is so. In the name of Jesus, let the church say amen. Sleep in in the morning. I'll see you at 7 p.m. in St. Sabina. Let's have church together. Peace. Go support Pastor Keon Henderson. He has products in the back, in the Welcome Center. Go support him in the back. I love you. Have a safe night. Peace, peace. So I can be free. So I can
so I can be free, so I can be whole, so I can tell everyone I know you thought I was worth saving. So you came to change my life, you thought I was worth keeping. 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 You thought I was worth saving. Join us at The Ship for Silent Saturday, a worship experience that will help us navigate the tension between Good Friday and Easter Sunday, Saturday, April 8th at 11 a.m. The Kids Don't Miss their Fellowship Chicago presents an Easter egg hunt, Saturday, April 8th, 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. at Fuller Park, RSVP at fellowshipchicago.com. Join us Easter Sunday, April 9th for three dynamic worship experiences at 8 a.m., 10.45 a.m., and 1 p.m. We'll be wearing all white. Make sure you join us for Easter Sunday at the ship.